Hi guys, so today we are gonna do lesson 4.2, Itsy or Bitsy or Food. Uh, we are working on the standard to use arguments supported by evidence for how the body is a system of interacting subsystems composed of groups of cells. Today we're gonna analyze observations from experiments with a physical model and apply the findings to the body system. So yesterday we learned about some the first step in the digestive system, which is in our mouth. And we know that some mechanical digestion was happening. That's when our teeth were grinding the food into smaller pieces and the tongue was moving the food around so that the teeth could grind it. And then there was chemical digestion happening with the salivary glands and they were excreting saliva to break down the starches into sugars. So we saw that when we tasted our crackers. So the chemical reaction you experienced when chewing the cracker was started by a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. These substances are called enzymes. Food, after it has been broken down by the mouth's chemical and mechanical processes, is still not completely broken down into substances small enough to move into other parts of the body. So the food molecules are still too large and must move to the stomach to be broken down further. So here, they're gonna go down this long tube and into our stomach. So the epiglottis, it's a fun word to say, it's that little part of your throat that is like a trap door that flops down over the windpipe, okay? Keeping the broken down food that's going to the lungs and directly toward the es esophagus instead. Now it's not that little hangy down thing that you see down there, you can't see it, but it's just like a little flap that opens and closes because when you drink water, um, you want it to go down the right place, right? Have you ever gotten choked and then you said, oh, it went down the wrong pipe? People say that, you've heard that. Yeah, because it went down into your windpipe instead of into your esophagus, okay? So the second tube at the back of your throat is the trachea, and that one goes to the lungs. That's where we don't want our food to end up, right? We don't want to get food or water in our lungs. That's when we start to choke. Uh, this is why the epiglottis is a very necessary organ. It's that little flap that closes and gets the food into the right place for you. All right, now then it goes in the esophagus. This is the long tube that connects the throat to the stomach. So it's green here in this picture. Obviously it's not green in your body. This is just a diagram, okay? And the muscles of the esophagus that are behind the food contract to push the food down while muscles in front of the food relax to let the food go through to the stomach. Mucus is produced in the walls of the esophagus to help the food move, okay? So if you've ever tried to slide down a really dry slide, um, you might have gotten stuck, right? So our esophagus has to have some mucus in there to make it where the food can slide down. All right, and then it goes into your stomach. That's a curved shaped muscle. Yes, your stomach is a muscle. In the stomach, the stomach muscle pushes and churns the food. A ring muscle called a sphincter is at the entry to the stomach. This opens to let food come into the stomach and then closes to keep the flood or fluid I think that's supposed to say food. Yes, keep the food. We don't want a flood of food coming back up, right? So we'll keep the food or fluid from flowing back up. So when you ate the cracker, which was a carbohydrate, chemical digestion started in your mouth. But when you eat fat or protein, chemical digestion does not happen until the food gets to the stomach and your small intestine. There's an enzyme in your stomach called pepsin. This begins the breakdown of proteins. So we know that the enzymes in our mouth break down carbohydrates. There's another enzyme in our stomach that's gonna break down proteins and it's called pepsin. All right, so this is an experiment where she's going to set up um, one tube 
that does not have any of the pepsin enzyme and one that does, and we're gonna to observe to see how it breaks down a protein. Now the protein that she uses in the video is egg white because there's a lot of protein in egg whites, okay? So we're gonna see how it breaks it down. Okay, we're going to do a digestion of protein experiment. In this experiment, we're going to be looking at um, digestion of the protein egg white and what conditions are needed for the digestion of protein in the stomach. So we have some egg white you can see here. In each test tube, there's going to be three pieces of egg white. In test tube A, we're going to put the enzyme pepsin. Um, with our egg white in test tube B, we're going to put acid. This is hydrochloric acid that's normally found in the stomach. And in test tube C, so test tube B will also have three pieces of egg white. And test tube C, we're going to have five mils of the hydrochloric acid found in the stomach and five mils of pepsin, the enzyme pepsin, and plus the three pieces of egg. And the enzyme pepsin is the enzyme that digests protein. So we're going to leave um, these pieces of egg white, so these three different test tubes of egg white, the different liquids, and leave them in the test tubes for a few days. Okay, so this is the digestion of protein lab, and we have left our egg white for more than a week now. And you can see here test tube C, which has the pepsin and the acid has um, been digested the most. Not much has happened in test tube B, which is just acid. And test tube A, egg white is still pretty big. It's got a little bit cloudy. So if you can see the difference, test tube C definitely has the most digestion of the protein happening. It did take a few days in the stomach. The digestion of protein can take hours, but certainly not days. It's speeded up by the fact that the stomach is squeezing the food, so breaking it down into small pieces. So there's more surface area for the pepsin and acid to attack it. It also, the stomach is a lot warmer than this room has been, and a hotter room speeds up the, the chemical reaction. So this is the digestion of protein. Uh, your stomach needs the pepsin, the end, that's the enzyme, breaks up the protein plus the acid to work efficiently. Go, oh, I'm not going to watch her again. All right, so basically, um, she had hers in, she had one with pepsin, one with acid and then one with pepsin and acid uh the way our book had it set up was to do water but it's not it's not going to change um if you have water okay um but with the pepsin and the acid you saw that on the first day when she put it in there there were solid white squares um but then by Day, the, the next day when she showed us in the video, uh, some of the solid has actually become a liquid and there would be no change in mass. So if we were to weigh that, uh, the mass did not change. So all of it's still there, it's just getting broken down, okay? So what happens to protein in the stomach-like environment? It is broken down into small molecules that cannot be seen. And how do you think this is similar to what happens in your stomach? Well, the protein that enters my stomach is going into an environment that has acid and pepsin. And I think the protein in my stomach will break down like the egg white did. So that's what's happening in your stomach. And like she said, your stomach is churning and it's going to happen faster in there because of that. So two processes are taking place to break down the food in the stomach. We have the muscular walls of the stomach churn and grind the food, and then chemicals, acid and pepsin, turn it into a thick liquid, as you observed, and it's called chyme. 
Okay. Chyme stays in the stomach until it is able to be squirted out of the stomach. And chyme contains the entire food molecules, but the pieces are still too large to move into the body. So they gotta go through some more processes that we will be learning about. All right, so your task now is to complete your Google form. You can refer back to activity 4.1 and this video for 4.2. There will be questions from both 4.1 and 4.2. It is a little bit longer Google form today, but you should have plenty of time left uh, to get that finished. All right.